Job says this in Job 42 verse 2. He tells, he tells God, he says, I know that you can do everything. And that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. And many of us know that. We probably prayed that prayer. God, I know you can do anything. You can do everything. No purpose of yours can be withheld from you. Because you are God who is sovereign. You are master. You are ruler. No one greater than you. You're not answerable to anyone else. In Daniel chapter 4 verses 34 and 35. At the end of the time. I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven and my understanding returned to me and I blessed the Most High and praised and honored Him who lives forever. For His dominion is an everlasting dominion and His kingdom is from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He does according to His will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. No one can restrain his hand or say to him, what have you done? There's a God in heaven. He's far greater than me. Nobody can stop him in heaven. Nobody can stop him here on earth. To Psalm 86 verse 15. But you Lord are a God full of compassion and gracious long-suffering and abundant in mercy and truth. You, O Lord, you're full of compassion. You're a gracious God. So when we say God is a God of grace, it means that uh, He is kind. He is considerate. He favors. He just blesses us. Exodus chapter 33 verse 19, God says, He's telling Moses, I will make all my goodness pass before you. I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. Let's read this. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. He will extend grace as he pleases. Whether anybody prayed or not, the Lord Jesus would have come and died on the cross in the appointed time. Whether you and I pray or not, Jesus is coming back. He will come back. Whether you and I like it or not, he will establish his kingdom. There will be new heavens and new earth. Nobody can vote for it or against it. Doesn't matter. God is sovereign. He will do it. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8 through 12, it says, By faith, Abraham obeyed. So Abraham had to have faith. He had to have obedience. He had to have endurance by faith. Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country. Dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which has foundations whose builder and maker is God. Verse 11. By faith Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. And she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man, him as good as dead, were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the sea. So God spoke, sovereign God, sovereign grace, picked that man, Abraham, Sarah. Why did God choose Abraham and Sarah? Why didn't he call, you know, pick any other two names? (laughs) Why them? Sovereign grace. So he calls them. I'm going to do this and this through your life. But they had to journey by faith. Matthew 13, 57 and 58 says this. And I'll read it from Matthew and also read from Mark. It says, so they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. Now he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. This is the same Jesus, same anointed one, but in his own hometown. Couldn't do mighty works. One reason, because of their unbelief. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace so that the promise might be sure to all the seeds. So this 
promise is for everyone, to all the children. It's given by grace, received by faith, so that everybody can have access to it. Everyone can receive. So that's why God has given us all one common requirement, have faith. God will do things sovereignly by His grace, but the norm is He requires us to receive by faith, what he freely offers us through grace. So that's what we want to pursue. We want to understand how do I walk in faith so that I can receive what God has planned for my life, what God has purposed for my life, what God has ordained for my life. How can I walk into it? Yes, he is sovereign. He has spoken. Yes, he's gracious. He's giving it freely. But he's called us to walk by faith. 